Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for attending this press conference. Uh, part of my role as the uh, unit commander in, of the whole of squad is I look after uh, kidnappings uh, in the city of Toronto. And what I want to speak to you today is in regards to a kidnapping that took place on the 18th of April uh, 2016. And the, the events I'm taking you back to that time is uh, started at 300 Front Street uh, on the 25th floor. At that point in time, in the early hours of uh, the morning, late the 18th of April to the early hours of the morning on the 19th of April, there was uh, gang members that were renting a, uh, a condominium on that floor, on the 25th floor, and having a party. Uh, uh, this gave, a lot of these gang members were associated to a gang that's known to the Toronto Police uh, as the uh, Young Buck Killers. And uh, what happened at that location was there was uh, members of another gang that were affiliated, some associates that, to the uh, Queen's Drive Crips gang. Uh, there was word that uh, the old elder members of the Queen's Drive Crip gang were going to come and, and, and crash the party. So uh, there was a bit of a standoff on the 25th floor when the, an interaction between the two groups took place and exchange of gunfire, which I want to show you here on the video here, explain to you what's happening. So we have four people in the elevator here that are, are heading up to the 25th floor. We believe uh, these four people uh, were part of the Young Buck Killers that went down to try and uh, locate the Queens Drive Crips gang that was in the building looking for them. They couldn't find them. And uh, once they get to the top floor here of the elevator and exit the elevator, the members from the Queens Drive Crip gang are waiting for them in the hallway and there's an exchange of gunfire as they step out of the elevator. As you'll see that uh, As you can see by the videotape that there's, uh, you're going to see at least two handguns. There is uh, uh, some of the video that we did not disclose has uh, more handguns visible. We believe on this evening there is approximately uh, eight to ten handguns present on the floor that night. Uh, there was no, uh, no radio calls to the police on that evening. There was gunshots heard, but the next morning there were shell cases located. Uh, police attended forensically and did a report. It wasn't until <coughs> the 19th of April that we learned that uh, of a report of a kidnapping um, of two young people associated to the uh, Queen's uh, Crips, uh, uh, Queen Drive, Queen's Drive Crips gang. Uh, as we, uh, as the, ki the kidnappers abducted these two individuals as they arrived at a, ho at a room, be more of a, a, co a townhouse complex at Swansea Muse, which was associated to the Young Buck Killers. Uh, at that location, the two 17-year-old uh, youths were, uh, were tied to a chair and beaten. Um, during their beating they were uh, forced to play Russian roulette with a loaded handgun. Uh, a shot was fired in the in the premises. It just happens that uh, while at that location the police were called on uh, two different occasions for suspicious activity that wasn't uh, located and the individuals were subsequently moved by these uh, this other gang members tied up to a uh, to two different addresses in uh, the Flemington Park Replin Road area of, uh, of Toronto, which is Lawrence Heights. Uh, they were tied to chairs again and, and, and beaten uh, throughout the day. While the beatings were taking place, uh, there was ransom demands made to family members for the release of the victims. The Toronto Police were notified and we were uh, working on the case uh, with uh, some of the family members and uh, at that point in time, uh, a media release was done to, for the victims, uh, looking for the victims as missing uh, persons uh, last week. Um, as, the, uh, as the beatings took place, um, they were uh, f also uh, forced to uh, uh, perform sexual acts uh, as our alle allegations. And then uh, a ransom was paid and the victims were released on uh, Thursday, which would have been the uh, 23rd of, uh, of April. As a result of uh, the ongoing investigation on the 24th of April, which was Saturday, we had information uh, that one of the uh, leaders of the gang, uh, a Quentin Gardner, was in the area of uh, 31 Division. Uh, 31 Division officers had a foot pr pursuit with him, and he was subsequently arrested and charged with numerous uh, kidnapping-related offences. As a result of the ongoing investigation from there, we did a search warrant at 167 Shaughnessy, apartment uh, 15, 
So um, at that point in time, a loaded handgun, 9 millimeter uh, Walther PPKK was uh, seized. There was three individuals arrested in, uh, for the possession of the handgun at that time, two uh, adult males, uh, Keel White, uh, who's 23 years, and uh, Deshaun Walters, who's 18, and a 16-year-old boy. Um, the investigation continued to the point in time where we now we have judicial authorization to release two of these. Uh, the one photo here is a 17-year-old boy uh, who's wanted for numerous kidnapping offenses. Um, and along with um, the adult, which is uh, Lincoln Richards, who's uh, 20, 23 years of age. Um, both are known to frequent Toronto. Mr. Richards has uh, frequented the Finch and Martin Grove area, along with Swansea Muse area. He's also known to frequent Leamington and Kingsville area of Ontario. Um, we're also looking for his family members. My understanding of the allegations are that his family members, his mother, grandmother, and sister may have been present in the house at Swansea Mew when the, uh, when the beatings were taking place. Um, since the, uh, the actual arrests of uh, Mr. Gardner, uh, we've been, uh, 77 Swansea Mews, is, the uh, townhouse complex has been vacated and we were unable to locate any of the, uh, the family members or Mr. Richards. There is now candlelight warrants out for both these individuals uh, for uh, kidnapping, uh, for ransom charges, forcible confinement, uh, assault related charges and firearms related charges. Um, both these individuals um, are, related to, are related to gangs in the city of Toronto as are the, the victims. This is, uh, um, I wouldn't call this uh, an innocent uh, stranger kidnapping. This is gang, basically gang war kidnapping where uh, one, uh, one group or gang kidnapping other groups, uh, other gang members uh, for, to make money, to send a message and uh, you know, as police officers, we don't pick our victims. We're here to protect everybody, so we need to step up here and uh, prevent retaliations by apprehending these individuals as soon as we can. Questions? How did the, where did the shooting come from? Like, did the one gang show up uninvited to this party? Did they show up wanting to, to kill the others? What are you alleging? <coughs> all this? Well, I, I'm alleging they showed up uninvited, uh, for sure. And uh, there was uh, obviously some hostility between the two groups. And, and there's always, in, in the gang culture, there's always friendlies on both sides of, uh, of the house, right? There's, it's not necessarily that uh, they're always enemies. Uh, it flips back and forth. So there's, there's friendly gang members on both sides here, but uh, the uninvited people showed up. The, uh, the people that were renting the uh, condo obviously didn't want them there, went looking for them to ensure they didn't crash their party. And uh, they all met in the hallway on the 25th floor very quickly as they're exiting the elevators. And, and uh, we anticipate there's several shots there were the, and several guns from the shell casing makes uh, that are at the scene. How many shots fired? We're not sure. Uh, I think approximately 8 to 10. That we, the only indication that I know for certain is the, one of the individuals that uh, fell in the elevator. Uh, my understanding is the uh, bullet may have grazed his head. Uh, he's never seen any medical attention. That's just uh, information that I received for our, throughout our investigation. And it does appear that way when you see him hit the floor and watch his hand movements. In that video? Not that we're aware of. And you believe that shooting is what sparked the kidnapping then? Absolutely. It, it, it's tit for tat, back and forth? Mm -hmm. Well, there, there was friendly, like the, the two of the victims that were kidnapped were uh, uh, associates of the gang that was not invited, and right. uh, the Queens Drive Crips, the elders, and so what happens is they uh, show up and, and these younger, younger boys are blamed for uh, for this, so they are, they are kidnapped and tortured until uh, and held for ransom. Okay, and so these two you're looking for, they were involved in the kidnapping. The two who were kidnapped and tied up and that kind of stuff, are those the two who didn't come back into the elevator? We don't believe that the two victims are anywhere in this picture whatsoever. They uh, We have no information that they were there. We believe that they were in the condo, wherever that was, partying at the time. These, these are gang members that uh, the leaders of both kind of gangs at the time are, are, and, and having a gunfight knowing one group is showing up the other group. Because they showed up, there's allegations, what we believe, is that they suspect the young people that were in the, in the condo partying with them tipped off the older gang members that there's a party there and, and show up, which caused us this, uh, which is, this is what happens in the streets. This is exactly what happens in the streets. So when those two, the two were, the ransom was paid, um, the victims were released, and then these two got away, 
Correct. Correct. Okay. There's more people involved in this kidnapping and abduction and beating than these two. These two, along with Quentin Gardner, we know for certain are the instigators and had the most to do with the kidnapping and, and the most aggressors. Uh, these two individuals, I would call him the ringleader, the most violent in, in, the, in the pack here, the 17-year-old boy. All right, and he was involved right from the pistol, his AKA, right from the beginning, from uh, threatening to kill them, playing Russian roulette, to beating them constantly, taking from address to address with other members of the gang. And there was a constant uh, conversation with family members to try and get money from the, uh, from the family members, which was paid uh, to, release, uh, to release these individuals. And uh, um, so we've done our, our bit of our work we, we, you know, through forensics and through other investigative techniques, including our, our victims. We've identified these two individuals who are, who are well-known gang members uh, and very violent uh, as people responsible for this and alleged and we w we want to get them off the streets as soon as possible. Can you just clarify when the kidnapping happened and where that happened? The, the, the start of the kidnapping, which didn't really have it, was shooting was over the 18th. It was about 3 in the morning when the shooting happened th on the 25th floor. When the, the, the young people that were kidnapped left that building and they all agreed to meet because shots are fired, they're afraid the police are going to show up at the Swansea Mew place, that is where they were forcibly confined when they showed up there and blamed for the shootout that happened here. Is that where they were held and beaten in the That's where it started, and then they were moved twice after that. So these guys are alleged to be members of the Young Buck Killers? Associates. Uh, uh, Troy Sh uh, Shea Gordon, definitely I would call him a, a member of the Young Buck Killers. I, I think Mr. Richards is an associate. Name Troy or Ty? Oh. I keep on making a mistake there. You, you said this is the reality, this is what happens on our streets, but this seems a little bit crazy. This isn't the kind of thing that we hear about every day. Just shots being fired seemingly out of nowhere in the middle of a condo building. Guys being tied up, perform, forced to perform sex acts on each other. I'm not going to get into what the sex acts are or what the allegations are, but I'm just saying that they were sexually assaulted. The, the, the actual... What, ha what I'm saying is happening a lot is, is two gangs feuding. And, 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 you know, one gang showing up at a party where another one, uh, and they're not invited, and then the guns come out. Uh, you know, we allege that there's, there's over five to ten guns at this, at this, uh, at this party. Uh, these guys are carrying guns around like crazy. I mean, it, it, if you see the, I've seen the elevator video prior to them in there, and they're, and they're looking at their guns as they're going up in the elevator. I mean, it's like, there's no fear, right? They're carrying their guns in the, in, in the condominium, and it's 300 Front Street's a nice place. What were they using this condominium for? It was, uh, well, you can, they rented it apparently uh, and used it for parties, uh, one of the condos. So did you, were you notified, they're moving two tied up guys from, from building to building. Did people notice that and, and notify you? Nobody noticed that they, they moved these people around to three separate buildings? There was a notification at Swansea Muse on a suspicious call that uh, a citizen phoned in and saw something suspicious, but it was never, uh, nothing was found when the police attended there um, at that point in time. We got involved through family members, through ransom, et cetera, that was being, you know, demanded at that point in time and, and well into the investigation. And we worked backwards. I mean, there was no link at the time that we understood that 300 Front Street is involved in the abduction until we start doing our investigation and then everything starts linking together. But that's what happens with these, these cases. Uh, you know, one thing re re relates to another thing, which relates to another thing, and, and I'm trying to get ahead of it here with the, with the Toronto Police uh, to prevent the next thing from happening by trying to arrest these guys before there's more retaliation at the end of the day. Call it Swansea News. Uh, I, I believe it was it was just that something to do with there's something going on in regards to um, some suspicious activity. Do you think it was unrelated or do you think no, it was related to this. Absolutely, I don't want to get into the exact contents of it, but there was definitely a radio call, uh, police attend in regards to, and again, it wasn't linked together until we worked backwards and realized that this was the, this was the call. It was about this. And they saw the cops. They freaked out. Took them to Lawrence Heights. Yeah, and there was a shot fired there also at at, 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 Chauncey, uh, at Swansea Muse, right? Russian roulette? Uh, no, it was just part of the uh, part of the sh you know scaring tactics, beating part of the. Uh, you said they were tortured. Is that fair to say? Yes, fearing for their lives, threatened to death. How old were the victims? The victims are seventeen. 
Mike, is there security at that condominium and they didn't notify you, they didn't see this activity, they didn't pick it up on the cameras? Well, I don't know if there's security at the condominium, but there was, it wasn't until the next morning when, when people, I guess, were, were leaving and they saw the shell casings and then they recalled they heard noise at 3 or 4 in the morning and it all people kind of... People hearing gunshots at 3 or 4, like in the hallway of their condo building, really? Well, that's, I can only tell you what's reported to me, Tamara, and that's what my understanding is. There was, uh, you know, they found shell casings and then it reverted back to there was noise at that time in the morning. So what's your message to the public as you see these, these two? What's no. Well, we need not to approach them. These these individuals are armed and dangerous, and we need somebody to phone Crime Stoppers or call the Toronto Police Hold-up Squad. Let us know where these individuals are, so we can get them off the streets. Right. My belief is they're armed and dangerous, and, and my my second fear is that there will be a retaliation of some sort in the gang world if we don't get ahead of this. I can see the gangs are doing this on a bit of a consistent basis with these kidnappings, and some ransom was paid here. What's, what's the range of money that gets paid in a situation like this? What are the gangs doing it for? How much money is, is being transferred for this? Well, I don't want to get in the money aspect, and, I, and I'm not saying that the gangs are doing this on a regular basis for the kidnappings, but, you know, I don't even know if it's the money at the end of the day that, that they're after as much as the fear and, and uh, the control that they're putting over each other at the end of the day here. I mean, they're not getting, you know, they're not making a living on this for certain. This is more of a fear thing, putting the fear of God into these uh, victims, trying to scare the, you know, make a point with the other gangs. Um, but, you know, being involved in this for a long time and being in charge of the Gun and Gang Task Force years for several years, there's always something that comes out of this if we don't get ahead of it. So we need to get ahead of it and get these guys off the street to, to try and control what's going on. Tell us a little bit about these two gangs. We've heard about the Young Black Killers before, but I've never heard the Queen's Drive Crips. Can you just go over where they're based and, and are they affiliated to other, like, who are these? Well, the Young Black Killers is my understanding, and again, gang culture changes, and so does the territory a little bit, or from the Driftwood area uh, aspect. And Queen's Drive Crips is, is, is Queen's Drive. It's down south of Falstaff, if you know the area at all. Um, and, and there's there's groups there's there's always forming new names or they take up new names as, as younger generations come up so they and, and sometimes they're allies and sometimes they're not right so uh, there there's a way away from driftwood to to uh, Falstaff that's a that's a bit of a drive um, so but they're not from the same neighborhood and they're and the Queens the uh, young buck killers my understanding are an allies with some of the people and the, they call the, the the driftwood jungle gang you know, some of the comments they're using. So, so there's always allies until a certain something happens and then they can become enemies very quickly. What's the connection to Swanson News and what's the connection to Lawrence Heights? Well, Lawrence Heights is, is what they call the Driftwood Jungle Connection, the uh, allies, uh, and that's the head of the allies there. Apparently there's people at that party from that area uh, that were friends with the Young Buck Killers. And Swansea Muse is where Mr. Richards' uh, his family uh, was residing. So. Um, and so that's where they went to, to start with, right after the uh, the shooting took place. And they're gone now. Well, they're on the lamp, as we'd say. Well, you mentioned, you know, this is a gang war sort of playing out. It's happening on the streets, and you seem sort of passionate about it. Is it? Can you explain why we're seeing more of this happen? Like, what's going on here? To to, to well, I mean, you can tell by the video that there's, uh, uh, you know, these, these people are carrying firearms and they're wearing hoodies. Very hard for uh, us not to, uh, you know, how do we know that they're carrying a gun on them nowadays, right? I mean, they're, they're feeling very comfortable carrying their firearms or, or their wares, as I said before in other press conferences. Um, they're not really being interrupted. They're not being uh, approached as much as they used to be. So um, there, there's a lot of guns on the street, and I think this shows it. And, we're, and you know, we've had a lot of shootings this year. Uh, as the media knows and, and the frontline police officers know. And sometimes uh, I think that's, you know, the police and the media seem to know a lot what's going on, but I'm not sure if everybody else knows what's going on that we try to keep on top of all this. Um, you know, it's like uh, sometimes it's like a boiling pot of potatoes, right? And you're, we're trying to hold the lid on from these gangs to make sure it doesn't overflow. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to, you know, keep the lid on things by trying to take the people that are causing the grief, the most violent people off the streets. Why do you think we're seeing so many more guns in the hands of gang members, in the hands of on the streets? What's going on here? Well, I think there's a, a, a the question you have to ask is there's probably a, a change of a criminal mindset here, and why is that? 
Why is there a change of criminal mindset and why is, uh, why is it they're feeling more comfortable carrying firearms? Do you think it's because there's no more carding? I don't, well, first of all, I mean, I don't use the word carding. I mean, that's, uh, I think there's lack of, lack of engagement or, or lesser engagement. I, I don't uh, want to say street checks, engagement. Police officers are used to engaging in it with gang members and with good people all the time. It doesn't matter who it is. If, if, if you're not engaging with them or it slows down, uh, you feel comfortable. I, I put it to you that uh, if, if you're speeding on the, on the 407 and you see a black and white police car out there, everybody puts their foot on the brake and slows down, right? That's what it is. So if, if police officers slow down on the engagement, that may have something to do with it, but it's not the only thing. There's got to be a whole bunch of things that are causing this. Um, and, and so I don't know what it all is. So you know the fact that there was nobody killed or seemingly seriously injured, yeah. all those fire, like such a small enclosed space. It's all amazing. Those it's amazing that nobody was hurt. And, and you know, I, I, as much as, you know, again, I, I said this before, I mean, there's, these people all have some type of gang affiliation, but it's, it's, they're still people, and we're trying to protect the 17-year-old the boys that are, that are associated with gang members at the same time, right? I mean, we, we take out an oath and we want to protect them and we want to get the bad guys off the street. They, so, they were released because the ransom was paid? That's my understanding, yes. Would you say so that this, their, these men, their lives are in danger as well in, in the way of retaliation? I mean, they, they might be on the lam from you, but they might be on the lam from the other that, And that's possible. That's absolutely possible. And again, in, in, in the gang culture, um, they could be friends tomorrow and, and enemies today. So um, the best I can say right now is I'm concerned for public safety. These two individuals need to get off the streets. And, and we have, you know, arrest warrants out for them. So we're looking for them. Is this something that's, I mean, have you been seeing this type of activity before where two gangs pitting against each other, the kidnapping that's happening, sort of that message <coughs> being sent uh, to the other gang? Or is this sort of a unique situation that you guys are trying to figure out how to deal with? We've had kidnappings before, and I mean, I look after them, but, but th this, this, I've heard, and again, I, I've never had any reported, but I've heard that this happens now and again, but never reported, but I don't have anything to substantiate that. I mean, that's, that's it, because um, if family members don't report this, it very well may never be reported, because, you know, in, in that culture, they're not really coming to the police, right? And isn't it often, like, extortion or an unpaid drug debt, something like, it's not very often you hear about... Seemingly, guys just allegedly kidnapping some other gang members just for kicks or just to. Well, I don't think it was kicks. I think they were sincerely pissed, right? I mean, they show you, know, you got a you got you got a gang showing up armed with guns and, and crashing their party, and then you have like ten shots going back and forth, and they're blaming those kids for, for calling. That's that's not for kicks. This is serious stuff, and, and there is a concern. I would be concerned that these guys are lucky they never got killed, and it might be only the reason that they're alive that we got involved in this and, and it, to, to begin with, and, and they may, uh, and that's maybe one of the reasons they're alive right now. But should uh, the public be concerned here? The, the, the public, you know, unless you're in the gang culture, uh, you know, but they don't need to be concerned. They need to be aware. These individuals are wanted. If you see them, call the police. They need to be aware of what's going on, and that's why I'm here today. They need to be aware. Concerned is a strong word. Aware is it. If you're in the... What if, what if the residents of 300 Front Street pokes their head out the door to see what those shots are, and they take a bullet in the head? That's pretty concerning. It's a pretty public place that they're firing these weapons. Yeah. All right. What kind of damage is done to that, to that uh, condo? When you're talking about all the shots being fired and whatnot, I mean, I'm... I think there's bullet holes in the hall, my understanding, and that's it. It's on shell casings, but... Uh, no, name, no, no one next to that unit said, oh, it's uh, someone's well, watching... Well, I think they called the police in the morning once the shell casings were found, and that's, that's kind of where we're at. Like, is there, you said concern is a strong word here, but as Tamara was saying, you know, this is a lot of this happening in a public sphere, and is there a concern that this gang war between these two rival gangs could spill out? and affect the public, you know, like if someone popping in their head in and all of a sudden, is that, is that? Well, I, I don't want to start guessing. I mean, you know, maybe you know, concern isn't uh, isn't too strong a word at times, but I don't want to send a public alarm out that we're having a gang war across the city. Right now, we're, we're isolated with two groups that uh, obviously cross the line in their own in their own culture, and I'm concerned about that. Um, and, and I want the public to be aware of that and, and ensure that if they say these individuals to contact the police. Uh, and obviously, I, I want to put a pitch out at the same time. If, if there's people out there that know, 
individuals that are possessing illegal firearms and carrying guns, you know, call Crime Stoppers. You know, the community has a right to look after each other here, and we need to get the guns off the street. And the only way to do that is we start making an effort throughout all of us out in the street, including the community leaders, politicians, etc., to get these guns off the street. So they rolled again. Where are these two, the, the Queen's Drive Crips and the... Just for general knowledge, like where's their area? Well, Queen's Drive is, yeah, it's uh, is the area. Yeah, well, it's south of Falstaff. I'm not sure. There's one or two blocks south. But it's off of Jane. It, uh, it's, it runs the cross street. That's kind of the area. A lot of these gangs start by neighborhoods. And, and so they, they come up with neighborhoods. And as they move, they sometimes are still associated with their old gang, even though they move into a, an enemy t turf, per se. Um, the w Young Buck Killers, a lot of, that's Driftwood area, and a lot of them, and there's several gangs that have been known over the years up there, and, uh, and these are the younger ones that have, have come up uh, from the old Driftwood, and then they split up again. So th they rename themselves as they, the younger ones come up. But that's the area they're from, Driftwood and uh, Driftwood and Finch, Driftwood and Jane area. Uh, I'm not sure of that. And were they already at the party or they... <laughs> no, they were at the party. Okay. The victims were at the party. They were taken and they were taken in place for the first time. Yes. When they were leaving, when they left the party, they were, they were taken, right? Uh, no, they were, once they left the party and showed up at Swansea Muse, that's when they were cap held captive and, and blamed for uh, the shootout. Captive at the place that they went to. Yes. So they, they thought they were going to some friendlies, and then these friendlies held them captive. Well, I think they were regrouping. They they thought they were going to meet the, the people they were at the party with. They were all regrouped at, at Swansea Muse, and at that point in time, the uh, the heads of state in, in, uh, blamed the uh, two uh, youths for this uh, so-called ambush and uh, held them captive and, and decided to make them pay were in the hallway, like un not seen on video, but part of that shooting? I do not believe that. I believe they're in the condo. You don't think they were in the part of it? No. Mm -hmm. I don't. The, the victims, are they alleged ties to which gang? Uh, Queens Drive Crips. Associates, yes. So the victims, they, uh, they were friendly with the people before him, but went to the party. Now, is that possibly, possibly played a part in them, you know, being ransomed and not being, you know, maybe for uh, a higher degree? Well, they were friendly on both sides. I mean, they were, they, they, they were friends of the individuals. They were obviously invited to the party of the victims, but when the elders of their group that they associated showed up and wanted to know where they were, that obviously caused this riff and shootout. So the, so the people in the elevator in the security video, that's the, queen, the queens? No, I believe that they're going to be the Young Buck killers from, from my understanding of the investigation. They went down looking for the uh, Queens Drive Crips and the Queen's Drive Crips beat them up to the 25th floor before they got back, couldn't find them. And as they're getting off the elevator, the uh, Queen's Drive Crips guys are waiting for them on the 25th floor. And it was since the ambush. But yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a bit of a, an unusual investigation per se, and especially since we have all these different crime scenes and we have you know, all this violence that's tied in with this over a matter of a, a, a four or five day period. So. Again, I mean, I can't say enough to the fact that we need to get the pictures out. We need somebody to come forward, let us know where these individuals are, so we can get them off the streets. How long is the judicial authorization for for the 17? It's uh, five days. From now. Five days from yesterday at 2:30, okay. when the authorization was signed. What does that mean? Sorry, I'm not. Uh, he, he's a young offender, so uh, as a young offender at 17 years of age, we have to get judicial authorization to release his photo to the media. Uh, and it's only valid for a period of five days. And it, uh, after five days, we can, we can no longer have his photo out in the media uh, and release it without uh, further judicial authorization. Can you do a reissue? I'm assuming we can if, if something changes. Right. Where were they last seen? Uh, they would have been last seen uh, approximately on the... Uh, Friday, Thursday or Friday, 23rd or 24th of April, up in the area of uh, Lawrence Heights. Okay, thank you very much.